so I'm in Madisonville and uh, yes, I'm visiting the French Rendezvous. Here we go. Sylvain Haché, uh -huh. and I uh, started the store 24 years ago. A lot of people expect it to be like, wow, 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 you know, oh la la. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's not that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, je ne sais quoi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is an old brand from the 1800s that still exists, Orger Egaré. And just as an example, this fragrance dates from 1804 and um, Queen Victoria uh -huh. loved this very fragrance and she used this and it's still being made the same way. Ah, uh, wow. Um, circumstances that appeared to me and I, um, I, uh, I went for it. So, nice. uh, so I started only with uh, antiques, French mm -hmm. antiques mm -hmm. and, um, and um, went to France and bought little things at first. Mm -hmm. And then, um, uh, at that time, I was in Montgomery. Yeah. Um, and um, then I started doing um, um, bigger things like furniture. So I did, uh, you know, shopping trips in France, buying furniture, mm -hmm. and then sending, sending all that stuff in um, a container. And then after maybe, um, I don't know, a year or so, People seeing I was a French native, um, they would ask me if I could bring new products from France, mm -hmm. like, you know, fabrics and soap, perfumes and stuff. And I knew nothing about that. So I, mm -hmm. I dug in, in the, that direction and um, started to bring a little bit of this, a little bit of this, you know, in very, very small quantities. And that over the years evolved as the new products are, are the, the main. So those are collector item. Uh, yes. Uh, what is those? Yeah, yes. like these. These are older. So mm. I mean, these are. This is new. You know. Yeah. This is from the thirties. Mm. Yes. And uh, mm. which one is your your oldest item here? Uh, uh, the uh, the oldest item. Mm -hmm. It's this probably. Yeah. Oh. This is probably. At least 250 years old. Whoa, 250 years old. Yeah, and it's um, in English they call it a jam cupboard. Yeah, that's where they in French we call that a confiturier. Mm -hmm. That's where they kept. It's, it was kind of the, the fridge at that time, <laughs> though there was no electricity. But that's yeah. where they kept all their preserves and stuff. Right, right. So they, um, they you know they were made in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Uh, but mm -hmm. this is an example. And it's all original. You, I mean, for people that like old furniture, mm -hmm. you know, all is authentic. And then in the back, I have an old farm table that was, that's probably also 200. I don't know, we cannot know exactly. Food, uh, so we have a lot of um, prepackaged French food. Yeah, we, know, can, all kinds. we can point that out uh, as we, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we are a little bit low yeah. right now, mm -hmm. um, but you know, from really good cookies to, Salt, mustards, mm -hmm. jams, um, syrups, the very good French syrups there. Oh, this is the French syrup. Yeah, that existed when I was young in France. That brand existed the same way, you know. Uh, I, I mean, uh, it's a lot of the items also uh, something you grew up with. Uh, yeah, like Chocobé, and that's old. That existed when I was young already. They have not changed the thing. The same, uh, same part. Okay, wow. Yeah. Uh, then uh, we make uh, real French croissant. Oh yes, real French. The yeah, it's all French ingredients. Ingredients. So we bake them fresh every day here, and we mm. don't sell them the next day if they don't sell on a given day. Here, you you buy croissants that are two week old in a plastic bag. Sure. In France, you bake them fresh, and um, you don't sell them the next day. It's just the way it is over there. So that's the same process you do here? 
Yes, we don't sell old croissant. Wow. Yeah, because I had uh, one early, a fresh. It was coming from a hole. Yeah. And I can smell that from the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Okay, so fresh croissant. So every croissant you sell here is always fresh. Yes, it's from the, 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 it was made the day you buy it. The day you buy it. Yeah. The authenticity. Quality. Quality, Period. I yes. mean, a, an old croissant doesn't taste like a, a, a five-day-old croissant. is a total different thing mm -hmm. for the palate right. than a, a, a fresh croissant. I mean, it's, so the French are pretty picky yes. about food and yeah. many other things. So the, yeah, it is... Um, it's just, uh, it's in the French culture to be picky. Yes, uh, your most prized uh, item here. The most prized item. Yeah. It's probably a, a piece of antique. Yeah. Um, I mean, furniture is obviously more expensive than, right. uh, than a plate. Yes, correct. Just to the size, but... Um, I'm in between that old bookcase here. Yes. What year is it? Whoa, this is nice. Well, I mean, it's probably from the late 18 or, or mid 1800s. It's from the 1800s. And it was painted yellow and blue um, more recently, obviously. Yeah. But. Um, ah, nice. It's beautiful. What is this here? So these are the table linens and mm. dish towels. Um, so tablecloth, mm -hmm. napkins, you know, oven mitts and pot holders. Mm -hmm. uh, all these are made in the south of France with French fabrics. And we also carry the fabrics that are used mm -hmm. to make these. And these are made in France. It's right. the fabric maker makes their own items with their own fabrics. Uh, and I have the bolts of the fabric. I also buy the bolts of some, not all of them, but most of the fabrics. So we have a room just with the, all the bolts, nice. the yardage. All right. That's good. These, and these are hand towels, very uh, pretty. It's even hard to conceive to dry a plate with one of those. <laughs> See, and I hear something different. Um, when I go to France, yeah. I take pictures. I like f taking photos. So I, mm -hmm. um, I make, I mean, I have green cards made with the photos I take in France. And I, I write on the back, I had it printed where I took this photo. Ah. So this was in the town where Picasso at his castle and where he's buried in Provence. Oh. And that's a field that was right out, outside that Lyon village. This is in Bourgogne. Mm -hmm. This is not King's Island. <laughs> <laughs> this is on the Mediterranean. Oh, wow. That was a nice photo. And, hey, and on and on, I have a bunch. You have took all of them. Yeah, I take these pictures when I go over there, just for fun. But if some come out nice, yeah, I have these greeting cards made. Oh, that's beautiful. It's a nice uh, personal touch. Uh, yeah, it's just different, you know. And we, uh, amazingly enough, we sell a lot of these green cards. Ah, oh. um, they are unique. Mm -hmm. right. You know. Body care, mm -hmm. soaps, hand soap, creams, you know, hand cream and body lotions, perfumes. Mm -hmm. Are you also have French perfumes? Yes, we are. Again, we are very low right now, but yeah. that table we have usually all the perfume. Oh, nice. It's a good. Oh. This is an old brand from the 1800s that still exists, Roger et Galet. And just as an example, this fragrance yeah. dates from 1804, and um, Queen Victoria uh -huh. loved this very fragrance, and she used this, and it's still being made the same way. Ah, wow. Sm it can smell like old money. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like, yeah, it smells like old money. Oh, nice. Uh, the cicada from Provence. Mm. 
Uh, this is the ceramic wall pocket. Yeah. And the, the cicada in, has been in the southeast of France, um, a symbol to remind people to enjoy life and relax. Mm. And that, that has been that symbol for many, many, many decades. I mean, for a long time. In the 1890s, a French potter down there came up with the idea of making a ceramic cicada-shaped wall pocket in which to put lavender because that region has a big industry of yeah. lavender farming. Mm. And um, so since the mid-1890s, mid the ceramic cicada has been you know, around and is still around, and different potters make them. So these I get from a potter in the south of France. Mm. Wow. These are garlic graters cicada. Mm. So you put your thumb and here's the grating Mm -hmm. And you grate garlic uh -huh. right above, or you can do that with cheese, or hard cheese. Nice. So that's different. So there's usefulness to it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what can, what do they, can they expect when they come to a okay. rendezvous? Uh -huh. um, they should expect, if they buy a croissant, they should expect not to be given butter with it. <laughs> so many people that come here for the first time yeah. and they buy a croissant because they heard uh -huh. and they say, can I have some butter with it? And I'm like, no. <laughs> because it's full of butter. <laughs> you don't want to put more butter. <laughs> In France, it's a snack. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you have a little, sun hits the spot as is. <laughs> <laughs> no need butter. <laughs> no. So that's one thing you can expect. <laughs> uh, other than that, it's you know what people say when they come in. You know, even regular customers, and we've got a lot of regular customers. Mm -hmm. uh, when they walk in and they are here, they they feel they are transported. Whether they stay here one minute or yeah. they stay here an hour, or, you know. Yeah. They feel transported to this environment, uh, the French presence. Yeah. Good or bad? Good. Yeah. I, was, it, uh, was it an intentional design uh, for you uh, as you put in the store together? You, you mean the... The, the... the design also sort of the French... Uh, oh, I see. Yeah. Well, actually, yes and no. I, we just knew that... Um, Putting French furniture, you know, in the best way visually possible, and mm -hmm. then in French mm -hmm. linens and f fabrics, and mm -hmm. the um, the prepackaged food, the packaging is yeah. always well done, and mm -hmm. just putting that around yes. would create that French presence without planning it, because the products come from there. Okay, also proximity just to have the cluster for this product yeah, already. It's like, yeah. And then this house is old from the 1800s, and so mm -hmm. though it's not a French style, mm -hmm. it still adds something being that yeah. old as an American house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe a, a special uh, for advanced one, they can come. How about they come argue with you in French? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I can teach them all the bad words. <laughs> so for advanced classes, uh, you can also come here to... Uh, yeah, okay, that's, that's fantastic, yes. Yeah, and if they want to... Some of them, when they show uh, like a, a, a personal interest in the French language, and I, I've met a lot of people of all ages, that, mm. um, especially some young ones who for some reason got attracted to the French language and they study it on their own, like mm -hmm. passionately. Yeah. So I, to these kinds of uh, people, I, I tell them that if they want to hear some French songs, they can come hear one of my bands in which I sing in French. Wow. And um, around, in, around Cincinnati. Uh, the group is called Transatlantis with an S at the end. Okay. And so there's a site, Transatlantis.club, 
and we have published dates. We play at festivals in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. Louisville, Louisiana. Yeah. And I've had a couple of customers who learned some of my songs after they asked me for the lyrics, after they heard the song live, mm -hmm. and who came here and recited not singing it, but just the entire lyric. Wow. I mean, that was pretty touching. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Not everybody is open to, you know, uh, hearing foreign languages. I have stories as a, as a gigging musician, you know, which I won't get into now, but reactions to people being there, hearing mm -hmm. songs in French and making comments. Mm. Why don't you play Bob Dylan? I'm like... <laughs> I'm French. This is my Bob Dylan. <laughs> there are many, many other musicians that will do a better job than me. Playing, you know, so... But overall, I need to give credit to people. They are Americans that... They are, most people are very pleased in general when they hear that French music. Yeah, yeah. Not about the quality of the music, but the, the, the fact that it's foreign. It yeah. makes them travel to France for those who have been there. They, I've been told that like a thousand times after a concert. Yeah. Or you, I felt like I was in France. Hmm? Oh, wow. So, uh, your work is uh, yeah. sort of uh, an ambassador. Uh, yeah, exactly. A rep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> Unintentionally. Unintentionally. <laughs> <laughs> And if I were from another country, I would have the same pride. You know, it's not, it's not because it's France. It's just that it happens I'm from there. Yeah. Uh, what would be the best way you can describe the French culture? To an American? Yeah. Oh. That's going to take two, three days. <laughs> <laughs> we got time. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's really hard to say in a few words. Okay. Because then I would omit things that would be as important as the things that I would say. Um, mm, okay. I mean, the French, like the Europeans in general, are more direct. Mm. And again, one cannot generalize that all Americans are not direct. This is more because it's the Midwest. Right. You know, in New York, Chicago, people are direct. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in this part of the, um, the America, the people like French, Germans, or other foreign nationalities will appear very direct in almost in, to the Americans in an exaggerated way, where they, they see that as being rude mm -hmm. or imposing, and it's mm -hmm. not the case at all in the old countries. People are more, I mean, all countries of all continents, people are more accustomed to mm -hmm. say what they think with not necessarily expecting the, the other to agree. It's just, I'm telling you what I think. Right. If I know you don't think like me, I'm not, not going to tell you. I will still tell you. I don't think I'm. The Midwest, that doesn't happen. <laughs> Just big smiles. <laughs> so that's one little drop of the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've described by... <laughs> <laughs> Not specific to the French, you know, the Germans are, yeah. you know, they're also really people from Eastern Europe are very... Right. Know, so it's, uh, it's more an old world thing right, right. versus um, specific to the French. Nice. The more direct, the more get to the point. Yeah, and they tell you what they think. Right. It's nice to be combative. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, you're right. It's like, yeah. uh, I remember when I was first here and I got into the music writing for TV stuff, you know, I dealt with ad agencies and so I had to go through meetings, you know, between right. different types of people. Yeah. And I quickly noticed that, uh, yeah. hi, 
I know. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. That saying what you thought is might not be taken well. Correct. 